Hello and welcome back to Destination Unknown, where the only thing certain is uncertainty. I'm Blake Connor here with Josh Elliott for the first time together in person. This That's is exciting. Weird. Yeah, it's going to be a new dynamic. I haven't seen you in like four months, man. <laughs> it's been it's, quite a long time. It's been a long time. Yeah. It only took uh, our, our great friends getting married to bring us together. Mm, absolutely. No, and I was telling Josh yesterday, I'm just excited because that is the first wedding that I've been to in years that I have just attended and not done the wedding videography for. So it was nice and relaxing, uh, beautiful oh, ceremony. Yeah. Uh, congrats to Mark and Lexi, the bride and the groom. By the congrats. time this comes out, they will have been married, what, a week? A, a week? Yeah, yeah, about a week, a week exactly. exactly. Yeah, okay. Well, hope everything's going just as you'd like it to. <laughs> it's, only, it's only been seven days. If it's not, you've got bigger issues. <laughs> they're, they're still on their honeymoon when this comes out, I think. Man, you know, Josh, there was a point yesterday at, that, uh, at the reception when um, All Star was playing. If oh you my remember, gosh. where uh, there were us and probably <laughs> like what, like six or seven other guys. Oh, yeah. And um, the part where, you know, Smash Mouth says, and they don't stop coming. Uh, we uh -huh. just kept that line going oh, for yeah. a long time. It's and they don't great. stop coming, and, and, and they, they don't, don't stop coming, coming and, and they, they don't, don't stop coming, coming and they don't, don't stop, stop coming. coming. But as you, as you can <laughs> tell, it progressively just got more and more intense until there were about seven or eight sweaty dudes screaming. jumping screaming jumping i believe that's how uh <laughs> mobs begin honestly <laughs> they hear a tune that they like and they're like "Ooh, ooh, <laughs> come brothers <laughs> um so josh it's my understanding that we actually have some um viewer submitted questions is that true yeah so we thought that uh well, well we <laughs> We thought we had to do something a little bit different for a podcast that we were actually together for. So I um, asked some of our viewers to send in questions, and you guys did not disappoint. So at least for a little while, we're going to answer some of the questions that you guys sent in. All right. And we were supposed to have a uh, an additional boy off camera reading us questions, but... He is upstairs asleep, mm -hmm. so we're not going to hold that against him. Yeah, and it is currently 10.45 a.m. Mm. Shout out what to, a slacker. Shout out to Joff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Question one. Uh, what were your biggest inspirations, either what films or directors, etc.? What were our biggest inspirations? I'm assuming the question is like um, for YouTube through or, the lens of yeah. like a YouTuber. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as I go, um, my biggest inspiration, personally, is actually um, Ryan Connolly from Film Riot. Uh, Film Riot is a YouTube-based like web show that releases new episodes every Monday and Thursday. They've talked about like filmmaking on a budget. Uh, their show released in 2009, and that's when I started watching them. That would have made me, oh my goodness, 12 years old. Yeah, I was 12 years old when that show came out, and I've watched it ever since. And I've sort of watched these guys go from just like like low-budget filmmakers to now making these large-scale productions. And Ryan Connolly's on his way to becoming like a director, you know, that's like cool. a like a big shot director. And I just think, as far as inspiration goes, that's it because they showed me like all the visual effects that I know how to do. Like that's where I first started learning that stuff. That's where I got interested in that, and that's what really made me want to do something with all of this. Borf. 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 <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Um, I, uh, I have two different answers to the question. One being um, someone from the actual film industry and then someone from YouTube uh, that inspired me. But um, from YouTube, since that was the route you went, uh, Ryan Higa was a huge inspiration for mm. me. Um, I just always thought his videos were extremely funny. Yeah. And the way that he the way that he edits his videos and puts them together, like I I love watching him and I love creating or at least in t attempting to create things like him. Yeah. All these but, Ryans, um, man. <laughs> Ryan must be a popular name but, uh, for talented people. <laughs> If your name you is Ryan and you're Ryan watching that, this. Have you ever met a Ryan that wasn't talented? No, I haven't. No, I mean, Ryan Gosling, Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> Ryan yeah, Reynolds, and Ryan. so uh, <laughs> in, the, in the film industry, the person that inspired me, which you may be able to tell from some of my videos, is Quentin Tarantino. And 
like I'm just talking like from the lens of the like ridiculous fight scene sequences oh, yeah. that I like to do or that are sometimes out of nowhere. Yeah. It's the paper boy. We're going to throw that link up Shaboom. on the screen now. And Blake's editing this one, so I get to have all the, yeah, all the you get plugs to, you, I want. <laughs> it's like, throw that up on screen. Throw it screen. on screen. Throw it but, on screen. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Quentin Tarantino, he's, he's a brilliant storyteller. He makes amazing characters. Uh, he creates an awesome world. The king of dialogue, and, uh, right? That's what they call him. Start to finish, he's got me, he's got me pulled in. It's, it really is telling of a director when you can have a 15 minute scene in one location that never changes. Like, yeah. like it's just on, like it, this could be a scene. Yeah. Like just two dudes at a table together, mm. but you are completely invested the entire time. And you're like, mm-hmm. you're, it's suspenseful. And like Tarantino is one of the few directors that can pull that off extremely well. Mm-hmm. So I like, I like him a lot. And then, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good I was question. Gonna, I was gonna shout out some more YouTubers, but uh, do we know? Do we know who asked these questions, or does that even? I can try it, to remember. Yeah, I'm. It's, Nolan, a, it's, a, it's okay if we can't remember. Nolan I mean, asked that question. Okay. It's so okay. shout out to Nolan. Um, I'm, I'm gonna sitting, do my best to remember. I am it. baking in the sun right now, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's. Oh, yeah. We're under this. Uh, the <laughs> this awning basically that has just a bunch of squares and there's one little patch of sunlight that is just burning me up right now but by the time this podcast ends i want you to watch the slow degradation of my hair first of all because i i know by the end of this it's all going to be drooping and i'm probably going to have like sweat (laughs) curls right in my eyes and i'm going to look like a disgusting monster probably got like pit stains going i'm like thank you for tuning in i need water All right, question two. <laughs> <laughs> question two. Pretty sure this is from Connor Thompson. Okay. Uh, if animals could talk, which one do you think would be the rudest? Which one do I think would be the rudest? I have not given any of these questions any thought ahead of time. Oh, my goodness. And I probably if, should. If animals um, could talk, what animal would be the rudest? Um, I would say probably... Uh, um, Moles. Geese. Because let's think about it. Geese. Let's think about it for a second. What kind of what kind of what kind of polite person would just come and just wreck everything that you have? Like, <laughs> like intentionally. And dig in your they're yard. Like, they jump into your ground and they're like, oh. <laughs> and, and, and they're I just like, can't imagine. Oh. <laughs> I just can't imagine that these are friendly creatures. But <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm I'm thinking I'm definitely thinking geese because I've seen geese chase people. I see like literally geese cover campus at Ball State, and like literally all they do is just they take mad dookies everywhere. Like you can't walk without stepping in goose crap. I mean it's disgusting. Oh, and birds you try to, would probably be super condescending. I hate and like you know birds. Like, just I feel like birds in general are just like, like oh uh, silly humans, be- you can't fly. <laughs> You need aeroplanes to fly, but watch these. <laughs> oh, you've not mastered the art of aviation. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I bet. Gra- I bet land land living is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> I think this question was an attempt at uh, getting us to turn on cats, but no, I love cats. I can't. You're never going to get us to turn on those boys. Yeah. You are not going to make that happen ever, ever, ever. Ever. Question three. I know for a fact that this came from Bailey Connerly. Yeah. Uh, who was your first celebrity crush? Who was my first celebrity crush? I know mine immediately. Oh, God. Okay, you, you go. I got to think. Right. You go. My go. first celebrity crush was Miranda Cosgrove. I, I fell in love with Carly for my Carly. Okay. And... I was at the young, naive, delusional age that, like, maybe I could find her phone number online, and <laughs> and there was there was a good amount of time, like a year's amount of time, where I was like, yeah, we're gonna start dating probably. And it's <laughs> like it wasn't like, like that, that is just that is sheer confidence right there. You're like, yeah, no, we're gonna. I don't. Yeah, confidence is a good word. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> foolishness <laughs> but yeah um, i uh, i i fully believed for probably a year 
I was like, it's just a matter of time before Miranda discovers me. <laughs> and then we're going to fall in love. Shout out to Miranda Cosgrove. If you're watching, I'm single. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think, you know, honestly, one of my first celebrity crushes, I'm trying to think, like, first celebrity crush, that probably happened when I was, uh, I know what it was. I know who it was. Uh, it was from also a Nickelodeon show. It was uh, Victoria Justice nice. from uh, Victoria. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, because that was right at the age when girls stopped having cooties for me. You know, I had just <laughs> entered the age of like, oh man, chicks are pretty cool, you know? <laughs> I and... I think I like the the females. <laughs> no, but, but either one of you, feel free to hit me up. Like, <laughs> we can just be man. pals. Bailey, who is, Bailey, if you watch this, who is your celebrity crush? Because I feel like you don't prompt a question like this without having a celebrity crush of your own. Yeah, I want everyone that asked us a question to answer their own question. Yeah, in the, in the comments. comments, please, please do. I'd love to know. All right, this is from Alec Kern, I believe. Mm. And he just left not long ago. Dude, I'm impressed with my memory right now. I'm just saying. Yeah. I got these questions a while ago. All right. Uh, what direction do you foresee the channel, Rapture Films, going after graduation? After graduation. It's a good questions. These you are know, really good questions. You know, there, there are a lot of things at play for when we leave graduation. There are a lot of decisions that need to be made. Uh, I'd love to continue Four. this channel for as long as, I mean, indefinitely, you know? There's no reason we can't. Now, by that, you know, I By don't... this channel, we mean... Rapture, Rapture films, films, which no. is not where you're watching this which is video. Not. And but if you haven't watched Rapture Films, do that. <laughs> Both of these channels mm. would ideally go on forever. But yeah, I, I mean, just as long as, uh, <laughs> as long as we still can. We can shoot these podcasts from anywhere in the world, so we can continue doing that. Yeah. Um, we can always, it really just depends on... Um, See, I have no real idea what I'm doing after college just yet. I have been postponing those thoughts and those decisions until post-summer when school starts. School starts in two weeks, and I think I'm going to postpone it for, you know, like another few weeks. But we'll see. Maybe we'll a see. semester. Yeah, maybe maybe a semester. Uh, I need to make some hard and fast decisions probably by December just because it's like I need to know if I need to get, you know, a lease for a new place. I don't know where I'm going to move. I don't know where I'm going to be. But one thing's for sure, we will keep the channels alive plain and simple we don't know where we're going but we, but we but sure we... know where we've been <laughs> i was trying to make a destination unknown oh. <laughs> uh, quote, but, but the yeah. only thing certain it's is uncertainty, uncertainty. there Absolutely. you go yeah my i mean blake kind of it's it's not really a question we both need to answer but like, we will anyway, because this is our podcast. <laughs> exactly. We can do whatever we want, and you have to watch it. All right. Yeah. If you close out, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You can't. That's the thing. <laughs> you can't do it. But uh, so ideally, the channels will go on forever. But as Blake said, it's a lot of factors. Um, if Blake and I are living in the same area, that is going to be a huge plus a huge plus in the likelihood that we continue these things. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just because, I mean, the whole point of it is like creating things together. Mm -hmm. So we haven't been able to do that for a while. No, this is the first time we've seen each other in months, like physically seeing each other. You know, we, we release all these things together, but I just hear his voice and see his face. <laughs> Sorry. But you yeah, so... Them. So... <laughs> <laughs> the goal of YouTube for us is not necessarily, like, making it big, I suppose. Yeah. Like, it would be cool, but, well, like, it it's, not, it's, not, it's not a need. It's not a must happen. It's just kind of, like, we want to do this as long as it's, like, as long as it makes sense to do it. If we were to gain a large audience, it mm -hmm. would make sense to continue doing it. Yeah. But... I don't know. We're going to go until we can't go no more. So mm. Rapture Films isn't going away anytime soon. Absolutely not. If someone was visiting your channel for the first time, what video would you want them to watch first? I have no idea who asked this question. Um, <laughs> I apologize. What video would you want them to watch first? Oh, I boy. like the question, though. No, that is a good okay. question. That's a great question. Um, you, uh, let me think. So There's a lot of videos I want people to watch. Uh, yeah. So I'm thinking it would be the route of a skit. 
Mm -hmm. So not one of our bigger projects. Um, and ideally, it would be something that we've made recently. Yeah, uh, just so the quality is high. Um, I'll just throw a name out there to get the ball rolling. Yeah. But uh, I'll send them over to Anime Poker. Anime Poker. Ooh, that is a good one. That is a good one. Yeah. I'd send them. It's a, it's a solid skit. Mm -hmm. We're both in it. Um, production value is high. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a good one. Mm -hmm. But anime good. poker. Um, if if we're talking um, short form, um, short form, man, I don't. I'm trying to recall what what all we've done recently. Yeah. I love I love directing people to. Uh, the, well, these are two. These are two completely different things. I love directing people to one um, the mob job. I really like the mob job, and then I love it, directing people to Indiana Josh too. Now, Indiana Josh 2 is a big investment to sit down and watch, but it's yeah. just, I'm so proud of all the writing in it. I think it it's one of the few things that we've ever really done that just the vision that we had for it completely filled out, basically. Yeah, like, we never made any compromises while we were doing it. It's like, okay, this is the scene we want. This is exactly the scene we got, mm -hmm. basically. And sure. I think that is, um, that's something to be proud of because you don't get that. You don't get that all the time. Not because... Um, you can't, but because like when we're shooting, like we have like scheduling constraints, we have like uh, issues with like, oh, well, we thought we had this like location or whatever, but we just didn't have to compromise for anything. So I'd send people that direction probably. Um, other than that, man, I don't want to, it's our YouTube channel. I don't want to pull it up for a crutch, but I'm just trying to think about what other videos we could send people to. <laughs> no, it's the, it's the question. Yeah. Like, it's the question. What video would we want them to see? Um, Definitely, I know it's old, but I love the Paperboy. The Paperboy is so good. I just wish that it wasn't filmed on an iPhone. <laughs> like, not even an iPhone, an iPod. A wise, a wise man an iPod once touch. said, you do what you can with what you have where you are. I Hashtag don't know who that dying was. Dying to Live. That wasn't Dying to Live. I know, but oh. we did. The, we <laughs> oh, did. yeah, no, a wise man once said. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what was the quote? A wise man once said. If, you, if a man hasn't discovered something he will die for, he isn't fit to live. Yeah, there that we was go. true. Hope may get you killed. But on the off chance that it doesn't, it's, it's pretty, pretty sweet. sweet. Check out uh, <laughs> Morning, uh, morning Glow. Uh, <laughs> don't, or, no, don't, don't. or don't. Or don't. It's, you 45, don't it's 45 minutes of sheer mediocrity. <laughs> sheer YouTube mediocrity. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, at the time for us, that was a grand project. That was the I mean, to, to date. That is the biggest thing I've ever done. Because it's 45 minutes yeah, long. Yeah, for sure. Like the Until script on that baby. Like I wrote a, we wrote a small novel, basically. And we, yeah. we adapted. It's still very cool that you look back and we have a completed zombie trilogy. By the time we were both 18, yeah. we made three zombie films. That is crazy. Uh, that just is forget, absolutely uh, Don't think, think about how good about. they were or anything, but just the fact that we did it. It's um, just coming from like a legacy standpoint. Like... Even though Rapture Films is not like yeah. they have like sixteen hundred subscribers, yeah, I forget the number, but like it's it's not a huge YouTube channel, but the like the permanent prints that we've left on the internet, yeah, it's just cool. Yeah, it's like just two buds coming together, like making movies together. Um, first of all, things that people wanted to watch because like Rapture Films has been a successful channel. Like there have been just ups as, and just downs as far for as sure. uh, just as far. But, sorry, I got really sidetracked. I saw the biggest mosquito I've ever seen land right there, and it started <laughs> inching towards you. And I was like, I was ready to sound the alarm. That thing would have sucked all the blood out of your body, man. It was this big. <laughs> oh but gosh, I would have died on camera. Yeah, like I'm like Josh, and, you're, <laughs> and he's siphoning you. Ugh. Um, no, no, but back on track. Um, anyway, it's no, just cool. Films, it's it's cool the legacy that we have left. Like forever documented on the internet is just so much stuff that we've created like for one hours and hours and hours of this podcast like mm -hmm. of us well, just we're up talking to, yeah, to each six other. hours now i mean yeah even even if we were to never continue which isn't true we're going to keep doing this indefinitely even if we were to stop right now we'd still have hours of conversation yeah. documented and i just think that's so fascinating Hypothetically um, speaking, our great 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 grandkids could watch it. Mm -hmm. They probably won't. They don't mm -hmm. have no idea or no interest in isn't who that, we are. Hey, isn't that but... so strange to think about? So, like, past generations, when you look back, like, if you wanted to find out something about your like great 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 grandpa, 
you'd have to go through like ancestry.com or mm -hmm. something like that or you'd have to like find out your lineage through some genealogy place yeah. whereas in our distant future like think about all the like like dead people's facebooks that are going to exist or like legacy youtube accounts and stuff like that like if our great 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 grandchildren want to learn about us and youtube hasn't been demolished and like they don't have some great data cleanse or something. Mm -hmm. They can. They could find out about us. They could watch us, and they're like, "Oh, that's that's going to be strange." Yeah. It that is, for the, for that the is future strange. of humanity, that's really going to be a strange thing because this is this has really been a thing in the past um, two decades, honestly. Like this onset of well, even like just the past like decade and a half, as far as social media and stuff goes. Like, that's going to be a question for the future of like, what do we do? Because there's going to come a time when there are probably more dead people Facebook accounts than there are live ones. I like feel like if you, the, I mean, I it's like going to take Facebook a long time. Thing, it's going to take a long time. I feel like the Facebook thing is an easy solution, though. I do think eventually they will cleanse Facebook because, like, it would just be like such of an inactive easy users. Process. Like, I uh, yeah, like they can detect, like, hey, these accounts haven't been active in like three years. Like, delete them. Delete them. Mm -hmm. That or like just what the? There was a very long hair right in your face. Oh, well, <laughs> it's just my beard here. Yeah. One of them was growing out of control. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, it, I feel like it would be easy to cleanse dead people yeah. off of Facebook. But So maybe our legacy won't live forever. Who knows? <laughs> it will on YouTube. As yeah. long as YouTube doesn't get shut down. Trump. <laughs> what? Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> President Bob Goff, George, in twenty uh, or twenty three forty eight, President John Michael, uh, Sarah. <laughs> uh, President no, but Ricky. I do. I do think that that's a really that's a really uh, fascinating thing. Just because, like, even if you look at like the quality of pictures, you know, like you look at photos of our parents from when they were young, mm -hmm. and some of them still look lousy. You know, like they were taken on these like old cameras, like before the technology was great. Like we're gonna have crystal clear. HD memories yeah. of everything. Like from here on, you know, like cameras are going to continue improving, but like we're too like uh, photorealism. Yeah. You know, like there was a time when like photos were black and white and like grainy and, uh, you know, people would have to pose for like 30 minutes to take a photo or something ridiculous like that. And we're past that. You know, you could take an HD memory uh, that will live throughout the ages on this right here. Yeah. You know, that's cool. It's a cool concept yeah. for sure. What's the next question? Next question. Man, that dog is going crazy over there. What roles do the two of you play in video making? Who films, who edits, who writes, etc.? Well, for the past good amount of time, both of us have done all of those things independently, basically. Yeah. We we haven't we have been working together on videos, but like it <laughs> we haven't been able to work together as much as we'd like because we're in a long not time. physically together you know it's very yeah. hard for we most of the time it's just we'll we'll let each other know about the the writing process uh we'll let each other know when we're filming and then after that it's just like oh hey here's the finished video you know um yeah. we're both completely capable of operating autonomously from one another but we like to involve each other in the process um it was different in high school. It was different in the years past when we lived closer, when yeah. we were together. Uh, we would split the burden a lot then. But anymore, since we're so far across two states, uh, we pretty much just do the entire process ourselves, individually. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Good question. And that was the last question. That was the last question. So I'm okay. going to search through my notes and see if there's anything... Uh, any other questions? Any any other thing that we could talk about? <laughs> um, <laughs> or we could just talk, you know? <laughs> we absolutely could. Um, so someone said to me, and I quote, I can handle lava. End quote. What? Some Okay, so, so, <laughs> so a human being looked you dead in the face yeah, and said, so, I can handle lava. So, You're talking about molten rock lava. <laughs> You I'm know, talking about molten rock lava. The, the so my friend, uh, my friend Mark and I, shout out to Mark, uh, mm, the throw those man. wedding photos on the screen. Roll those photos. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful ceremony. Hey, I could play your best man speech right here. 
<laughs> you, I mean, you could if they wanted to see me cry. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, so Mark and I were talking to someone uh, while we were in Delhi for our internship. And yeah, that's what the people call it, Delhi. Delhi? I don't know, I don't know if nope. that's true. <laughs> I just call it that. But Mark and I were talking to someone and like she, what is the, the, the politically correct way of saying this? I mean, I don't um, know what you're going to say, so I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> she was mentally younger than her actual age. So she was 26. Okay. But she had the mind of, like, a 14-year-old. Okay. Okay. Um, weird conversations come up when yeah. talking to her. And... Um, <laughs> And she got onto a conver- a topic that we did not want to participate in. And I I had the idea to steer the conversation in a fun and playful way. Saying, and you can answer this question too, but uh, what kind of storm is your favorite? Like snowstorm, lightning storm, uh... I just, I just like thunderstorms. Hurricane. You know, I like thunderstorms. That's the thing. I mean, they put me to sleep. Like, I know intrinsically with thunderstorms, there, there's lightning. But if you can't see it, that's my... I like hearing the sounds, but not seeing the, the bolts of lightning. <laughs> Her response but, to this question, though, was... So, I was, I was listing off some elements. I was like, you know, rain, <laughs> snow, lava. And she's like, oh, I can handle lava. Wait, and, do- Wait, I don't so know you why list, I brought this you, up. I was going to say you listed lava as well. <laughs> like when you asked what her favorite. Okay. So lava I thought storm. Were, I thought you were going to say she was the one who brought up lava storm. No, You're I the brought one up who, lava. <laughs> maybe there's more of a s- statement on you than <laughs> the it lava could, storm. It could but be. <laughs> she said she could stop lava, you know? Oh, I By can handle me. You know, lava. I, so I found out. I um, I found out that if. Did you know that if you were to fall into, vol- if you were to fall into a volcano, you wouldn't sink into the lava? Did you know that? Because it doesn't, it's not like a liquid. It's, it's molten rock. So if you were to fall into a volcano, into like uh, lava, basically, you'd break your legs. Like when you hit the ground. Huh. Because you'd hit a solid sheet of rock. You'd probably, it, it's a basically like the consistency of quicksand. Like you'd like probably slowly sink, but you'd catch fire and die so quickly it wouldn't matter. But like if you were to jump into a volcano, you wouldn't like sink into the lava. You'd break your legs on the molten rock at the top. Yeah, inter- interesting, morbid fact. There that you is go. that is interesting. That's uh, something that I certainly did not know. Now, speaking of lava, I watched three Tom Cruise movies this week. Nice. Do you like that segue? Oh yeah. No, so my dad and I went to speaking family of video. Molten rock. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of smoldering talent, we watched <laughs> Tom Cruise. No, man, I have smoldering not. Hot. I have not. When. When my girlfriend Rachel watches this, she is going to make fun of me so much because is Rachel I, a uh, a consistent viewer. Uh, she's wa- I believe she's watched. I know she's watched through at least episode three, and that's three hours of listening to us. So I think that's pretty impressive. Yo, but, Rachel, what the heck? Why aren't you commenting? <laughs> <laughs> Leave um, a comment on well, these I know she's, tasks, she's, girl. She's going to make fun of me because I have not, and this is not an exaggeration. I talked about it in the last week's podcast, and I'm going to talk about it in this week's podcast. I have not stopped talking about Tom Cruise for probably two months. It's probably been <laughs> 60 straight days, I think, I've talked about Tom Cruise. And it's not, it's not healthy, but I watched three movies. I watched Days of Thunder, I watched Top Gun, and I watched Jerry Maguire. Jerry Maguire, nice. of all three of those, is, have you seen have you seen any of those movies? I've seen Top Gun. Top Gun. I haven't okay. seen the other two. Yeah, no. Um, Jerry Maguire was great. Um, Days of Thunder was good. It, it had its flaws. Um, and Top Gun was Top Gun was solid two out of three for those yeah. for those uh, out of all of those movies. So out watched. of those three movies, yeah. which of them are better and which of them are worse than Jurassic World? Mm, well, every <laughs> single one of them is about. <laughs> We don't. We don't have to go down this road. <laughs> no, we do because we no, gotta bring it up no, every podcast. No, I don't. We literally every <laughs> single podcast we've done. I talked about Tom Cruise. I've also brought up. Jura- have we? Have we went one podcast without saying the words Jurassic World? I, I think. Don't... I think episode five is Jurassic World free. I'm not. Well, I'm not positive, 
but <laughs> we might do so. We might do something like this. We might like casually bring it up and then avoid it. Uh, that's just gonna be we. No, because we Not talked about changing the name of the podcast to Jurassic Hurl. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my goodness, I'm. So- I'm sorry. Okay, no, I brought so, that up, so, and it was a huge roadblock in conversation. So in last in last week's podcast, I talked about how excited I was to go see Mission Impossible Fallout. Mm. Since then, I've seen it twice in theaters, and I'm gonna go see it again. Here's the thing: watch it. That's end of story. It is. Uh, I'm just gonna go out on a limb. Uh, this is my opinion. In my opinion, it is the best action film I've ever seen. Period. Mission it's Impossible old. Fallout. Um, second or er, second. Runner up to that is Terminator 2, Judgment nice. Day. Love that movie as well. But uh, Ethan Hunt just delivers, man. I'm glad. Man, uh, I can't. I'm glad you've seen some quality ashen. Ash, ashen. Ashen. Ash, ashen. Ashen. I want to talk about of... my favorite type of tree, the aspen tree. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me tell you a bit about. It. <laughs> no. Gosh, these doggos. Man, do, sure. do, do they run out of borks? Do you, I mean, what do you think they're it, talking about over there? You know, they're probably they want they want their voices to be immortalized along with ours. Mm-hmm. They know that we're that we're doing this podcast for YouTube. They want to be remembered. Um, what kind of is that a man? I'm terrible hey, at dog breeds. Put your dogs inside. I yell to no one. nobody <laughs> who's at this house currently. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, why don't episode. we why don't we talk a little bit about um, what we did last night? We had a we had a good we had a solid boys' night last night. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So no. after the wedding, we uh, we we meaning the boys mm. uh, decided to have a boys' night. Mm. Um, partially just because like we haven't seen each other in a in, long time. Yeah, it's been so. months, and it'll probably be more months before I see people again. Yeah. So I'm gonna shout out a bunch of names. Uh, Blake Connor. Boom. This guy, myself, our friend Todd Smithers, our friend Joff, our friend Alex, yeah, and my friends who are now your friends, yeah, uh, Cody Derringer and Nathan Martinelli. Mm. Uh, we all we all came back to Alex's place and uh, hung out for a little while. We we took a dip in the hot tub. Yeah, five feet apart because we're not gay. Yeah, we're not. We're it's a large hot tub. We were all five feet apart from each. Mm, yeah, no. Well, <laughs> but that was a lot of fun. And then we left from here to uh, go to uh, the church that Alex works at, and we played. <laughs> what if we get him fired? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't talk about this. <laughs> we played Fortnite for a while, Man, and then we if... <laughs> we we sucked it up, and then we. Man. Played some games, mm, lots of games, yeah. lots of games. <laughs> no, there was a there was a period of time where um, we were we were tossing we were tossing around um, a football, and <laughs> it was me, Alex, Joff, and Alec, and we were out there. And uh, Josh has had his, his knee injury, so he was he was all time quarterback, as he called it, which was the right choice anyway. Mm, yeah, Chucking I've seen I've never guys. seen more perfect spirals. In, uh, Dude, in one day, it was thank you. it was wild. I Except taught an art uh, class, but I taught a uh, Tom Brady how to throw a football. Mm, that it's gonna get us some controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom uh, Brady, if you're watching this, please uh, confirm. Mm. I, you know, I really, I think it would be so funny. Like, what if we had like, we only have like 60 views on each of these podcasts, but like, what if one person watching them was just like a superstar? <laughs> <laughs> like in like in like some aspect like and it doesn't even matter what like whether they're an athlete whether they're like a singer like whether they're like a movie star like uh what if like one day we get like a random message from like Beyonce and she's like hey guys i just wanted to let you know that i really love what you're doing like keep it up first of all would never happen second of all i'd love that oh yeah that <laughs> would make my life yeah if the queen was watching our podcast <laughs> Do you want to be a guest? You can come on to every single episode if you want. <laughs> what a game changer, dude. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, Josh, I was um I was talking to somebody. I was in I was in the car with somebody the other day who just smashed on their brakes for a squirrel that ran out. And my head about went through the windshield, man. I was like, "What is going on?" They're like, "Did you not see that squirrel?" I was like, "No, I saw it." Like I did. But you just we're gonna die, man. <laughs> and it occurred to me that, like, um, 
I, I'll break for squirrels and that sort of thing. But I'm never, I'm never gonna drive off the road that sort of thing because if, no. that's a, that's a slippery slope into killing yourself. But I, it made me think, and I do feel bad about this looking back. But the, really, it wasn't my fault. I couldn't do anything about this. When I was 16, like three months after I'd first gotten my uh, driver's license, I drove to Peyton Felix's house. Yeah. Uh, to visit him in Williams, Indiana, and I'd never been there, so I was driving these roads that I didn't know, and I swear, I killed more animals that day <laughs> than I ever have. All of them unintentional. I hit six animals <laughs> in the time it took me to drive there and back. What? So here's what happened. I was driving, and at the time, I drove a, Chevrolet, a blue Chevrolet Cavalier, this small car that was sat really low to the ground. On my drive there, I pull off into Williams, and I'm driving along, and what do I see? Like, I see like a blur, like run out in front of me, and then I hear a <laughs> and I look in the I look in the rear view, and there's a dead squirrel, and I was like, oh no, like this is the first animal I've ever hit with a car. This is the first animal I've ever hit and killed, and I was so sad. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, and before I know it, a second squirrel runs out before I even have time to grieve the first one. I'm like, I'm like looking in the rear view with this squirrel and then suddenly, and then I look in the rear view and there's another one like 15 feet out from the first one. I'm like, and I just want to cry, man, because I can't even believe that this has happened. And so then I'm driving and it's not a squirrel this time. I see a little white blur and I'm like, oh God. And it is a possum, and I feel it go. I feel it go under each wheel. I'm like, and I'm basically sobbing at this point. Like I've hit so many animals. You know, they say that serial killers start out with animals. <laughs> I'm not a serial killer. I swear, I cried. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm gonna sneeze so much. Josh, if you could uh, vacation anywhere, where, where would you go? Japan. Japan? Yes. For what reason? Like, where in Japan? Oh my gosh, hang on. <laughs> so, I have a list of places I have to go to in my life. <laughs> I have a place. I have a list. I have a list of places. Oh my gosh! I feel like I'm dying. Just, just try it again. I have a. <laughs> okay, I think I'm good. Yeah. I have a list of places that I have to go to. Hey. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna take the conversation. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, where I vacation, as far as vacation goes, you know, I feel like there's so much of America that I have left to visit. You know, like I've been we I've been westward. <laughs> I've, I really, I've been there once before. I really want to go back to Monument Valley. Do you know where Monument Valley is? Nope. It's a, it's a place of red sands. It's You've seen it in every Western movie. Let me think of a Western movie that you didn't immediately identify it from. Uh, a Million Ways to Die in the West. Did you ever see that movie? Yeah. Okay. It's like the giant, it's like beautiful red sand for like basically the entire desert. And then you see these giant rock formations that come straight up into the air. That's what Monument Valley is. I know you'd know it if you saw it yeah. because you've seen it in so many movies. Um, we went there and it's, it's really just, it's really difficult to not just be in awe of things like that. You know, there are certain things in life that you go to to like have fun. There's certain places in the world where you go to for entertainment. You know, you go to the movies, you go uh, to these different places. And then there are other places that you go just to live in awe of these things, you know, like the first time you see them, like the Grand Canyon, I describe it as that, you know, the Grand Canyon sure. is a beautiful place. I don't, I, after about an hour of looking at it, you're kind of like, oh, what do we do now? But I mean, for that first, for that first 60 minutes, when you've never seen anything like that and you think, oh, wow, like this was, like this took millions of years. 
to create, mm -hmm. basically carved by erosion. It's it's a phenomenal thing to even consider something yeah. like that. <clears throat> the Grand Canyon takes my breath away. I think every single time I go. Yeah, like it's incredible. But... Josh, where would you rather go to the deepest to the deepest depths of the ocean or into outer space? I don't really want to go to either. Okay, no, this is this I is think... a world where um, you're held at gunpoint by um, Elon Musk. And he says, listen, you're going to do one of these things. And he only comes to mind because, you know, he does submarines and rockets and all of that. <laughs> I so, think. Both as, ends of the spectrum. I think as odd as it sounds, I would rather go to space because I think <clears throat> space scares me less. That's fair. There are some... There's some real monsters down there at the bottom of the ocean. We don't Plus, even know what all's down there. Well, I mean, how could we? It's it's thousands and thousands of miles across. You know, we've only got, I believe that there I believe this is correct. Um, I think there are it's either the answer is four or five. There are only four or five man-made submersibles that can actually handle the pressure at the very bottom of the ocean. I found that out watching Planet Earth and it took them months and months and months to get all that footage because first of all, imagine how long it takes to descend to those depths yeah you know miles below the earth's surface that's uh it's quite a long time um now josh this is something that i feel like i've i've avoided talking about for a long time but i i really just want to bring this up because it's more of a more of a confession than anything um do you have any did you ever do any embarrassing things online like things that you look back and you kind of cringe about um I feel like you have a story ready to go. Oh, I, I do. That's so, it's it's a transition, but I would like to. I'm asking you because I'd like I'd like you to say yes so I can feel better about myself. Well, I would have to think about it because I just don't really know. Yeah. No. So, jo um, <laughs> so there was a good portion of my life when I was probably sixth through ninth grade where I was an avid, and when I mean avid, like I did this a lot. I was an avid contributor to the website fanfiction. Fanfiction.net. <laughs> oh. No, I never did anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, looking back, it's very cringeworthy, but I remember from the time I was like 11 until I was probably 14, man, the coolest thing in the world you could do was write stories about pre-existing characters. <laughs> And at the time, I'd like to think that it was this pure, wholesome thing because I was I was a kid. You know, if I was still doing that at 30, it might be a little strange, you know. But <laughs> that's where I met some of my first online friends, actually. <clears throat> I, I don't know if I've talked about this before. I, um, I'm Facebook friends with this guy now. I This was on the, there was a partner site called Fiction Press. And as I got a little older, when I was probably like from age 14 to age Probably into, well into when I knew you, uh, 14 to 17, I contributed to this site called Fiction Press. And it's a lot, in my opinion, it's a lot less cringy because they're original stories. It's basically just like um, this online, not forum, but it's an online site where you share stories and that That's sort cool. of thing. Uh, and I met this man by the name, well, by the screen name, Pandemics. And he wrote zombie stories. And I followed these zombie stories for years and years. And he taught me a lot about writing, actually, because I discovered him when I was very young. And he, he left me comments and gave me suggestions. And honestly, I, I feel like I attribute a lot of the way that I write now and a lot of the way that I speak now to just some of the earliest things that he told me online because he, he spoke with this, um, this eloquence, basically. It was almost poetic. And I feel like I, especially when I write, not necessarily when I talk, I know I blabber a lot <laughs> and ramble. But when I write, I feel like I put this um, artificial eloquence to a lot of things. You know, I add this, um, and, and you, you know that from dialogue that I write because you're like, mm -hmm. no normal people speak like this. You speak like this. <laughs> <laughs> when, we, when we write scripts for videos, you're like, hey, you need to change this lot right here. This like, people don't talk like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, no, he, um, I, I'm actually Facebook friends with him now, and it's been a long time since I've talked to him, but like, I never thought that I'd, uh, meet him because I just knew him as a screen name and he had like a little avatar that for the entirety of the time I knew him. Did you ever see the Philociraptor meme? Like where it was yeah. like the old one, it's like green and the Velociraptor's got the, you yeah. know, it's like if this, had, like that was his, like that's what I imagined this man looked like for years because that's all I had to go off of basically. But man, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot for a 
three fingered individual to write. Mm, it is three little raptor three claws. Yeah, just, <laughs> just go into town. That's ridiculous. <laughs> it take a long time. Yeah, no, I never, <laughs> never did anything, did anything of the sort. like that. I was, I was a cool kid. I don't know. I was working up to like a Farmville confession or something, but like. <laughs> No, I never did anything like that. When I was younger, I made YouTube videos um, on a different channel uh, for Super Smash Brothers 4 speculation. And like before, before uh, Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U and 3DS came out, yeah, like the six years leading up to it, yeah, like the Smash community on YouTube was thriving, yeah, and I was a part in that. I would make uh, I'd make YouTube videos on uh, roster predictions okay. and uh, like potential move sets for characters that mm -hmm. I added into the game. Yeah, uh, pretty good by the way. Uh, <laughs> Nintendo, if you're watching, <laughs> you may want to hire me because I've got some ideas for you. Sakurai. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I I never really did anything super embarrassing online. You can't find those videos anymore. Um, I deleted all of them. I wish I wouldn't have, but I went through that stage of life where you're super self-conscious about yourself. Yeah. So I wanted to leave no trace of anything remotely embarrassing online <laughs> of myself. All right, Josh, but, I, I have one final tangent I think we can take and then we can uh, we can wrap up. This is something Alec posted, or no, Nathan Martinelli actually, he posted that. Um, and I, I really want to talk about this because I think uh, you and I both have a lot of thoughts on how this could go down. Um, so right here, right now, um, we're recording this podcast and we get a notification on our phones and it says the zombie apocalypse has begun. You know, it doesn't necessarily say that, but like we know, like civilization is falling. Like in the background, we see a helicopter crash. You know, zombie apocalypse Where do started. we go? What do we do? What is your survival plan in the zombie apocalypse? How long are you going to live? Are you going to be a Rick Grimes? All right. Are you going to be a Jim from season one? There are a few things in life that I am extremely confident, like, in. Like, a few hypothetical scenarios. A zombie apocalypse is one of them. And I feel like that's like, oh, everybody says they would survive the zombie apocalypse. But you're but convinced you would. I'm convinced that I would because I have the mind to do it. And what I mean by that is I would, this may be a horrible, like, confession of character, but... <laughs> For those of you that know me, which is probably all of you, but I am a very nice guy. Like, I don't I don't have enemies, really. Like, I, I get along with pretty much everyone. But if my life, if my survival depended on me making difficult decisions, yeah, I would be able to make those decisions extremely easily. And what I mean by that is, and it's horrible to even say it in a world where this is like... <laughs> fake <laughs> but if no the zombie hesitation you're pulling started, the trigger i would pull the trigger i would i would no probably question i would probably go the shane route if we're comparing <laughs> to rock, walking dead characters mm. i would be the person that would devolve mm. or evolve so, into the person that he had to be to survive mm. very very quickly mm. so so what you're i'm not naive mm. If I were to run into a group of, like, ex-Marines, mm. like, I'm not going to say that I could, like, survive an encounter like that. I'm not like saying that. I could fist fight 15 of them at once. 14, maybe. Like, I'm not, not saying 15. that I could survive something like that. But if we're just talking, like, if we have the stuff the sheer, not. The sheer cold-hearted, like, if your best friend comes up and he's like, I've been bit, you're like, oh, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no ceremony. Like, he says this to you in confidence, hoping that you'd help. And you go, oh, here, I've got the solution. It's a 9 millimeter bullet <laughs> through the face. Oh. Anyway, that was just answering if I thought I would survive Where would you, not. okay, where would you go? But, um, because, so, see, the thing is, I feel, I feel quite the opposite. You know, I recognize how difficult emotions are in the world where there aren't zombies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I recognize that, you know, uh, last night we took a ride through the desolate country. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was thinking about it, you know, there was this thick pluming fog and I was like, man, if corpses started walking out of the woods, I just couldn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if the dead started to rise, it's like, I couldn't, I couldn't mentally handle that. You know, I'd look at that and be like, 
all right, I've had enough. You know, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all completely circumstantial. And this is all, and it's all completely hypothetical because yeah. it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. No. But as soon as we say that, you know, we're going to release this podcast, and then what do you know? Zombies start coming. <laughs> I Just our luck. I was watching Destination Unknown. And, and then two. Destination <laughs> Unknown predicted the apocalypse. <laughs> Destination Unknown knew what was going to happen all along. Mm, yeah, no. This is actually, uh, it's a front. Uh, we actually are with the, you know, the shadow government. We really know who's the, pulling the strings the, behind the dark, everything. The dark government. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's not who you think, actually. You know, the Wiggles, they've got a big part in this. You know, you know, <laughs> fruit salad, yummy, yummy. Yeah, that's code. Okay, when they say that, about thirty-seven thousand sleeper agents awake. <laughs> you know, every time the Wiggles come on TV and they they give that dance, like several people in their homes, their eyes roll back in their head. They go, <sighs> and then suddenly they're on a mission. Man, if the apocalypse did start right now, though, if it started right now, like this second. I'd be so I would, unprepared. I would be screwed. Yeah. Because I can't run. <laughs> yeah, this the apocalypse. My, you surviving? My top, my top speed is literally like a speed walk. Like it's a power walk. <laughs> and it's just me limping along. Like maybe I would survive it was if it was the like walking dead zombies. You know, okay, the ones yeah, that like just slow. Walk. Yeah. But like, if it oh, was like, no, no, if dude, it's the, like, here's the thing: if they're nobody would zombies, survive. World nobody War would see. Nobody would survive those. Run- That's so like, they sprint faster than I can. You know? <laughs> Jeez. World War Z is completely different. If you think you could survive that apocalypse, first of all, you're you not are, Brad Pitt. Let's be honest. You are a naive fool. You are a fool if you think mm. you could survive World War Z. No. No. <laughs> Running zombies. Forget that. Vampires, um, though? Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so dead. I'm too trusting. What if, the, okay, Someone so would... for vampires, if, okay. So the thing can... about vampires, though, is that you, you usually don't even know that they exist until That's they true. get you. Now, here's, okay, here's a question. Which here's a real hypothetical. Exist. If, you know, vampires can't deal with holy water, so if you bless the water, you think they could bless clouds? You know, they're just like, uh, they, they do ceremony for the clouds, and then every time it rains, all the vampires go. Is that why all the vampires are European? Because Toto already <laughs> blessed the rains down in Africa. I'm sorry uh... for that one. <laughs> all right, thank you, guys. This has been Destination Unknown, episode six. six. Episode six. Uh, we've had a lovely time. We've been together, Josh. We've been together. We are and... in the same... <clears throat> Podcast. Next podcast. Not gonna be are, like that. It is Definitely. not. We're not gonna be together, but it is gonna be fun. Uh, to everybody who out there who asks questions, make sure that you respond with the answers to your own questions and other people's if you'd like, because we'd love to hear what you've got going on. If you have any suggestions or any questions you'd like for us to answer next week, please let us know in the comments below. And otherwise, we will see you next week. Logan Paul and KSI pay-per-view tickets are available now on YouTube. If you're gonna tune into the fight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, undercard Jake Paul and Deji uh, my predictions for the fight uh, I think I think the Paul brothers are going to have a clean sweep on those on those Euro Euro boys